All right, this is Dr. Heath Van Horn. I just wanted to make a quick video. Um, it's been a long day, so I'm a little tired, but let's get this out so that way you guys, when you're reading, can understand a little bit more what's going on. So what I've done is I've made this network on Packet Tracer the same as the network that you see in the readings. You can see here's PCA, here's PCA, PCB, and PCC. And then switch 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and switch 4 and 5. All right. So this makes things a little bit easier when you can um, uh, see how these things are occurring. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to attach these cables and now you see that PCA I already configured with an IP address because I don't have a uh, I don't have a DHCP running so I got an IP address and it says yep I know where everything needs to go it needs to go out port FA0 okay which is fast Ethernet FA is fast all right, and it's going to go to this port 1 on this switch. And they just turned green. So what that means is when they turn green is that they both recognize that any packet from A that goes to the switch, and the switch recognizes that anything that needs to go to PCA goes to this green triangle here, this port right here. As we connect the devices, you'll start seeing the uh, orange looking colors turn green. And that's because there is a mechanism in there called the spanning tree protocol that is actually populating um, a little table inside each of these switches on where all these things belong. So that one just turned green. So this one has just learned that PCA is located at this point. This switch just learned that PCA is located at this point. This switch just learned that PCA is located at this point. And this switch here has just verified that PCA is located at this point. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a quick label here I think for PCA goes to this cable. All right. So so we put that label there. Then we can, anything for PCA goes to this cable, anything for PCA goes to this cable, anything for PCA goes to this cable, and anything for PCA goes to this cable. All right, so we do this, and I'll tighten this up a little bit. So if switch 5 ever had a PC connected to it and it said, hey, I need to send a, a message packet, let's say it's hello world or something, to PCA, it immediately knows that it has to go to this cable. When this switch receives it, it's going to receive anything that's sent on this cable. When this switch receives it, it says, hey, it doesn't go to this direction because that's PCC. It says, hey, I need to send it to PCA and anything going to PCA goes onto this cable here 
and then piece then this one says oh I need to go to PCA it goes on this cable here this one says I need to go to PCA and there finally gets to PCA um, if you want to see this oh let's go back so you can see this in um, you can see this here by the A looking at the cable okay now you can see the C here from B and what S3 will learn switch 3 will learn is that any packet coming here needs to go to C it will say hey it needs to go to this cable so we can change this to be for PCA or PC Charlie goes to this cable and then this one is the same way or PC Charlie all right you starting to get how this works and then I could label the rest of these but I think you get the idea is how these things link up together um, so that way you kind of understand the correlation if you want to see this in action, Packet Tracer is great for seeing this stuff in action. So if we uh, hit play, and you'll see STP stands for uh, the Spanning Tree Protocol. And you can see how the packets are going through the switches, and each packet is saying where it came from. It is telling the switch, this is where I came from. When it gets to a PC, it's a, the, the PC says, hey, I'm not a switch, and so it just throws the packet away. That's why you see the big X. And so it repeats that every few seconds. Um, this is a very oversimplified view of how this works, but graphically, it is very, very nice to see sometimes. Um, it can be confusing because you can't see this on a network. You will never see the packets like this. This will not occur. Um, I'll show you in a minute what your packets look like um, on, a, on a switch. And that's where your bread and butter is made. Just a second. All right. Um, I'm surprised that hasn't happened yet. But Cisco has a proprietary thing when you have unmanaged switches like this there it is um, it's called the dynamic trunk protocol I, I think that's what DTP stands for there's so many acronyms I always gotta look them up but anyway uh, when you have unmanaged switches and they're all Cisco equipment they talk to each other and they say hey this is a trunk specific between you and me and that's what some of these uh, DTPs and CDPs are for so you don't need to concern yourself with that. That's beyond the scope of the reading today. You'll get into that later on. But it's nice to see how these switches, and these are unmanaged switches. I did not program these. They are learning organically where all the packets are. So let's go back to real time. And then let's show you what it looks like when you actually plug a cable into a switch into the console port which I'll be working on that video in a couple of days. And that's what the switch looks like. So if we want to see what our spanning tree looks like, we need to look at the MAC addresses. And so we can say show MAC address table dynamic. And that shows us that anything that comes from PCA has to go to fast Ethernet 2 and that aligns with the way our plug is fast Ethernet 2 fast Ethernet 2 so anything that comes from this MAC address needs to go there alright so now when it comes to Ethernet though if we ping something and to do a graphical ping you just grab this envelope and then you say hey I want you to go from PCA to PCB and
and now it, it did it successfully. If you want to see the simulation, we can turn that on and we can watch that. And so it'll transverse the network because it already knows where to go. It says, hey, you're, actually, let's, let's reverse that. Let's stop that for a second. Because anything for PCA or anything for PCC, um, we'll see this. Okay. So the last device left, PCB, and it goes to there. So it says, hey, I need to go to PCA. And the switch automatically knows where PCA is because of the spanning tree. And then when it gets to PCA, the response knows how to get to PCB to tell PCB it received the packet um, because of the spanning tree. And I didn't label all those, but obviously all the ports on the left side of the screen say, hey, anything for PCA go here. The ones on the right side of each switch say anything for PCB go there. So now um, you're going to see the the spanning tree again go. So let's clear this. All right, so we can put in um, one from there to there, and then we'll put in one from there to there, and then we'll put in one from there to there. And you can see them all operate at the same time. All right, they're all going to different destinations, and you can watch them. Um, as they transverse. So there's the ARP. And the ARP is who has this MAC address. And once they know what, who has the MAC address, then they start passing the data. There goes the ping. Okay, so now the pings come. That's what IMCP, uh, ICMP is. That's the pings. And you'll learn about ARP requests in the next chapter, so don't freak out. But you can see how all these packets, they now know where all these envelopes go. And this is how, and now take a look at the time in seconds. See how much data has flowed through here? We have only spent 0 0.017 of a second in transmitting this information. And then it had to wait almost two seconds, which is a lifetime in computers, before ST, STP starts again. All right, so we'll go back to real time, and we'll put that over there. But now, let's look at our routing table. Or it's not a routing table. It's our, um, sorry, it escapes me at the moment. Uh, routing tables are in routers. Uh, switching tables are called... Um, it's in your reading, I forget. Anyway, you can see that now this, we're looking at switch one, switch one has now memorized four different MAC addresses out on the network. And so it knows where all these devices are located. And it knows how to get there. So it says, hey, if I ever see anything for this MAC address, and if we look at PCA, we can look at um, its configuration, and its MAC address is Delta Alpha Echo 7, Delta Alpha Echo 7. So it knows that anything for Delta Alpha Echo 7 needs to go through port FA01, which is that one right there. So obviously these other ports are for other PCs. Okay. So hopefully that's starting to make sense. I'm just trying to bridge the theory with the practicality. Um, and I will try to make another video. It'll probably be later on in the week where we use a tool to uh, do that scan. Um, oh, we might be able to do it here. Let's see here. Let's see here. 
trace route. Um, oh, it's trace RT for Windows. Trace RT 192.168.1.2. And it says it only takes one hop to get there. So I, we're not going to see a whole lot because these are acting like hubs. But, um, or unmanaged switches are essentially a hub, but it doesn't forward the, every packet everywhere. So um, we're not going to see a whole lot, but we will get to a point where I can show you this stuff a little bit more using uh, NetScan and, and um, um, Packet Tracer and stuff. So, all right. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, hopefully this video makes sense. It's just trying to compare this reading and how these things learn the tables to how the network would actually look. All right. Have a good evening. I will see you guys later.